Good morning, everyone. Today we read the Book of Numbers, chapter 13. I divide it into a few paragraph sections. First, 1 to 16, that God commanded them to send out spies into Canaan. And then, verse 17 to verse 25, Moses commanded them to go forward. And then, verse 26 to the end. And the uh, spies came back to report to the people. First one, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. So God commanded them to send out spies into Canaan. And they just passed by some important places after two great trials. And they complained about having nothing to eat, and God sent them quills. And then the second trial, Miriam and Moses slandered Moses. So they've just experienced this, and God continue to lead them forward. They should know clearly that God is with them, that God dwells with them, and God is powerful. But And then this time, actually, they, they were close to Canaan. And according to the journey, when God asked them to send spies into the land, that means God also thought that they should go in soon. Go into the land soon. And then so the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, send men to spy out the land of Canaan which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. God said, the time is up. Now is the time you should send tri uh, tribes. You, you should send spies from each tribe to go into the land. And each spy should be a leader among them. God said, you're not just sending a random person, but a leader from each tribe, someone who could be responsible and could take the lead. God knew clearly if the leaders didn't go into the land to have a look, and then it will be hard for them to move in. I don't know if you have this experience. In the past, when I was, in, was a businessman, wherever I went, and I would think, oh, that's a beautiful place. It's a nice place. I, I want to take my wife to come back again. So after having a look, you have a motivation to go back again or to do that. So God commanded the, uh, each tribe to send a leader to, to be a spy into the land of Canaan. Verse 3, so Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all them who were heads of the children of Israel. Now these were the names from the tribe of Reuben, Shamua, the son of Sacho, from the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of Horai, from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son son of Shef, Shefune, from the tribe of Issachar, Egal, the son of Joseph, from the tribe of Ephraim, Hosea, the son of Nun, from the tribe of Benjamin, Pati, the son of Raphu, from the tribe of Zebulun, Gedil, the son of Sodi, from the tribe of Joseph, that is from the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susi, from the tribe of Dan, 
Amen. Um, Ami, Amiel, the son of Gemari from the tribe of Asher, said to the son of Mikael from the tribe of Naphtali, Nafbi, the son of Foshi from the tribe of Gad, Geuel, the son of Maki. So these are the names of the men who Moses sent to spy out the land, and Moses called Hosea, the son of Nun, Joshua. So Moses asked a leader from each tribe to be a spy. He recorded he recorded down all their names and the well-known ones, included Caleb from the tribe of Judah and also Joshua and the son of Nun. At this time, God, uh, Moses changed the name for Joshua. His name used to be Hosea. And so Caleb and Joshua later we see that they're very famous and Joshua led the people into the land of Canaan. So they chose the 12 tribes. They were all the tribe leaders. They were ready to spy out the land. According to the command of God, each tribe sent their tribe leader. And then let's see how Moses instructed them. Verse 17, then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. Be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So Moses instructed them, go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains in Israel, the southern side. Now we call it the wilderness of Judah. And as one moves upward to the north, there will be more mountains. And then they will pass through some patu, And then they will go to the mountain of Hermon. And so they will be climbing up from the south to the north. And in the Dead Sea, that is 400 meters below sea level. And so as they would pass through the Dead Sea and going northward, that means actually they're climbing up. So when Moses says, go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains, that, that means going up to the north. And Moses says, see what the land is like, whether people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many. So notice the population there and have a look at the place, if that is that a nice place or not, and whether they live in the cities or, uh, or like in the camps, just like the Israelites camping as the nomads, or did they live in strongholds? So that means it would be harder to attack them or take their cities if their cities are like strongholds. So they Moses um, wanted to know to have an idea whether of what kind of strategy 
strategy they would need to to get the cities when they would go there later on. Moses knew that those places uh, would be granted to them by the Lord, so they would start to cultivate the land to become farmers before they were nomads or they were um, herding their flock. But soon they were going to enter to the land to settle there, to plant, to farm. And so they had to take a look at the land to see whether they are forest or not. And ask them to bring back some fruit because that was the time of the season of the first ripe grapes. So let me divert a little bit. I think the last two weeks have been very special as we read the Book of Numbers. And now today, this chapter, we read chapter 13. And actually, in, the, in our first year anniversary, we are hoping to rent a venue which can hold about 300 people at least. If we don't set up tables, only chairs, we can maybe even have 500 people together. So that would be a great place for celebration for our anniversary and also for an uh, evangelistic luncheon. And Loretta and I, Loretta and I yesterday, we, we went to that place, like spies here. We, um, had an appointment with the, the boss in that venue, and the boss also brought along with her the manager and the venue manager. And so and she even said to us, if you would come, if you will come in the future to rent this place, I can let you use our sound system so that you don't need to bring in the sound system every week, and you can even use a VIP room. And so it's very interesting as I read this chapter today, this morning. Yesterday, we had an appointment with the boss of that place. Uh, that was according to her schedule. So it's very special today, as I read the book of Numbers, it really is like if we are synchronizing with the, with the schedule of the book of Numbers. Our experiences have parallel with the scriptures. And so we were thinking, OK, if we go there, where are the toilets? How can we move things? Is there like a handicap toilet? How can we move in equipment? Are there elevators, uh, lifts? Where can we set up the loudspeaker? And where's the control panel? So we went to have a look at all these things. And Moses was the same when God instructed him to send out spies to the land of Canaan. The spies should check out the place. And most importantly, Moses told the spies, be courageous, do not be afraid. And don't just go secretly, but just go as if you are going to become the master of this land in the future. And verse 21, so they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob, near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron. Ahima, Shisha, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Suan in Egypt. There they came to the valley of Eskol, and they cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes 
whips. They carried between two of them on a pole. They all brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the Valley of Eschol because the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there.、Uh, Wanted to show the PowerPoint, the、uh, two maps with English. The one with English first, then you can see the route. This map can show you clearly what were the strongholds and the peoples there. So, so this one.、Uh, zoom in. They started from the south to the north. And that was the route of that. That was the route from the south to the north. They walked through the promised land. You see the red line. It went through the whole land of Israel. Today, if you go to Israel, there's a highway here, exactly on this red line from the south. To the north. So the spies started from the south. In that area, actually, the Amorites lived there. On the western side, near the Mediterranean Sea, there were the、uh, Ammonites, and then they went up. From the Sheba to Hebron, and they got. Where did they take the grapes from Hebron? They called. They gave a new name to Hebron and calling it the Valley of Eshcol because they took with them took back some plants, mainly a cluster of grapes and also some pomegranates and figs. And what was most eye-catching was the cluster of grapes. Today, if you go for a tour, for a trip to Israel, you see that they have the symbol of two men carrying a cluster of grapes on their shoulder, and that cluster of grapes is super huge. Maybe the Israelites had never seen such. A huge cluster of grapes. Each grape is like a ping pong ball, so huge. So after they came back, they called that place the Valley of Eshcol, which means a cluster, because that cluster of grapes was so eye-catching. But There was a problem there. To the north of it was、um, the Amalekites, and to the west of it, near the sea, were the Philistines, and they were all giants. We'll see later as David fought against Goliath. Goliath was so tall that all the Israelites were terrified. No one dared to fight with him. So you can imagine when the spies went to Hebron and in that area saw all these giants, they were so afraid. And later. They went to Jebusite, which is Jerusalem today, and they saw the stronghold of the Jebusite, the, the city of David in Jerusalem. Later, and so the Israelites were astonished because the city was built on like a mountains. It would be difficult to attack them and get, and and it was hard for David to get the city of the Jebusite. In the end, he had to build in the water tunnel, the water shaft, to get into the city of the Jebusite. To take it down, so they were must be thinking, oh, how could.
could we get these cities? They're, they're like strongholds. And so they continue upward into Shechem. And Shechem is a very important place. Abraham used to have an altar there. And from Shechem, you can see uh, the two mountains of blessing and curse. And then going further upward, to go through, uh, pass through the Petu, the plain, a very fertile land. So today, even in Israel, there are a lot of agricultural farmland there. And then as they move upward, they would arrive at Galilee, and also a very fertile place, a beautiful place. And then as they continue to go up, they arrive in Dan. Um, at the foot of the Mount of Hermon. And Heshon was the king there, and they had the iron carts, very strong people. As we read the Bible just now, it said from the south to Rehob from Sin to Rahab. Next picture. You can see more clearly from the south to Hebron to Jerusalem, you pass through all these places of Heshon, and then you can see Rehob. And then finally to the entrance of Hamath. Hamath is beyond the mountain of Hermon, even near Ham uh, Damascus nowadays. And even they went up to the north, arriving at the capital of Syria and even to Lebanon today, which means means they pass through Babylon all the way to the north. Why would they go so far away? In the book of Numbers, in the time of Numbers, in their hearts, they believed that God would give them a promised land up to Lebanon. So from Rehob until Hamath, so God's promise is actually huge. And to the south, it should go down to Yimahath near Egypt. So the land that God has promised to the, Is to the Israelites is actually very, very huge. So as they went to the entrance of Hamath, they returned back and then they brought with them a branch with one cluster of grapes. And you could imagine they were, the Israelites were all astonished seeing the huge grapes and the pomegranates and the figs. And they came back after 40 days. So over one month, and then they returned back to the Israelites. So you can see that God originally wanted to give them an abundant place and blessings. And it's not easy. They, they saw a lot of people who were stronger than them, so that was actually a test to them. On one side, they, see, they could see all the goodness and abundance of the promise, but on the other side, they also saw the challenges. So they had to make a choice. Do we focus on the 
um, what, on what is good or, or do we focus on the challenges? Okay, back to verse 26. Now they departed and came back to Moses at Amron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Piran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to the, all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruits. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. This it truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. They came back. You can imagine they showed all the fruits to the Israelites, and they would be wow. They have been in the wilderness for a long time. They have been eating quails until they come off their nostrils. And now, finally, they see this wonderful fruit so huge. These large grapes. Just imagine. And they, they were in the wilderness under the heat of the sun, and then suddenly they saw these fruits, juicy fruits. They would be like, wow. And then they said, these is truly a land flowing with milk and honey. It's really amazing. Okay, let me explain to you what does it mean, land with milk and honey. Milk actually represents um, herding the flock. And it's good for the, uh, the land uh, in the south. It's really good for shepherding and herding the flocks. And the honey refers to agriculture. The northern side of the land in Israel is actually very suitable for agriculture. And the Israelites were, um, they had to learn to farm. But, so to summarize, the land with milk and honey, it means it's a place that's really suitable for herding and for agriculture. It will provide all the needs of the Israelites. But then, uh, the Israel, despite they said, Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong, the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Na there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. So they reported all these good things about the land, but at the same time they said, nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. And the Anakites, they were the representative of the strong people there. And as I mentioned earlier, they saw the Amalekites in Hebron. And Hebron was actually built even seven years earlier than Soan in Egypt. The giants gathered in Hebron, and the city was very strong. And they said, we saw the Anakites and also Amalekites and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites. They, and the Canaanites dwelt by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan, and as we saw earlier on the map that I showed you. He said, this is really a great land flowing with milk and honey. But nevertheless, be careful, brothers and sisters, of these words. But nevertheless, because they take away all our faith and destroy our faith. And so we see the giants and the cities, the strong cities, all the this foreigners and Gentiles. So in the eyes, they saw a lot of difficulties. First 30, then Canaan quieted the people before Moses. 
and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. So Caleb was trying to comfort the people, encourage them, we should go out, we can take the land, take possession of it. He was also one of the spies. They went from south to north and came back to, to the Israelites. The other spies, they reported about the giants, but Caleb had a special, unique perspective. He didn't complain. Brothers and sisters, today, today, what do we see? Do we say, wow, it's really like this, so good? Or do we say, but? Verse 31, but the man who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. They reported the bad news, which means words that kill faith. These words are bad reports in the eyes of God. So new crop 611, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, and the New Testament also tells us anything that's not by faith is sin. So anything that will kill our faith is a bad report. So be careful. What, what do we say? Do we say something that kill or destroy others' faiths? We must encourage and build up others' faith. And what is, so what was the bad report? They said the land through which we have gone as spies is the land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. So they were saying that the enemies were like giants. They could easily devour and eat us. They were the descendants of from the from the angels and men. So they were giants and we were like grasshoppers and of course that's exaggeration but those people were really tall like giants so they said we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight which means they could just stumble us on their food on their food and then kill kill us all like grasshoppers. So the spies, what they meant was don't go up there. We cannot overcome them. We cannot win them. These people, they will devour us. We will all die. They will just eat us up, and treating us like grabs, hospers. They can stumble us and kill us with their feet. So, what is the application and reminder for us today? We need to be careful how we look at things. The Israelites follow God. They left Egypt. They, they have witnessed the templates and, the, and how the Red Sea divided. And when they grumbled, they experienced how God sent them manna and quills. And God's anger was aroused when they grumbled and complained. And they experienced following God every day with the pillar of cloud and fire. They
they saw how the pillar of cloud would settle down or, or move up, and they saw how Miriam became leprous immediately. So if they would remember what God has done and just believe that God can still do all these things on the Canaanites, just like for Miriam, God can strike her with leprosy with one word, very severe leprosy like snow. If God want, if God would like to attack the Canaanites, it's not difficult. He could make them all become leprous. He could send fire to all the camps of the enemies. There's nothing impossible in God. But the Israelites seem to forget all these things. They just focus on what they could see with their own eyes. They were terrified by the giants. They forgot all the miracles that they experienced. They forgot about the Red Sea, the cross, the leprosy, the fire. It seems they suddenly for lost all their memories. They could only see what is ahead of them. So what is the greatest problem of human? We are all short sighted. We cannot only see. We can see what is near, and we cannot see what is far. And we are always so forgetful of God's grace. So this spies, they can only see the challenges nearby. They cannot see the promise ahead. There will be challenges for sure, but we can go through these challenges as we remember the promise for the future. But the Israelites, they were like having short-sighted short-sightedness. They forgot about God's grace and power. They only saw the nearby difficulties. So the difficulties actually covered their spiritual eyes, the eyes of faith. And that was the problem of the spies. So today as we follow God, we need to pay attention. What do we see? Do we have spiritual short-sightedness? Do we forget easily? And we need to hold on to God tightly. The raiment that God has given us is really, truly, we should not focus on the but or nevertheless. We should say, well, God's promise is really true. God is really with us, so we can go through all the challenges, overcome the difficulties. To be spies, to be the leaders, to be cell leaders and tribe leaders, we need this eyes of faith to lead the people of God into the promised land. So may we all receive this eyes of faith to see the really and not say nevertheless or but. God is high above and mighty, but he cares for us. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He reigns in history. Brothers and sisters, today, this morning, let's reflect God's greatness again. Whenever we see our own strength or the circumstance, we have a lot of doubts and we see our incapabilities. But today, God is telling us again, focus on God. Our God is great and awesome. 
到佢能夠嘅實在臨到嘅神。He can send the ten plagues. He can save the Israelites out of Egypt. He is the one who can divide the Great Sea, so all the Israelites could walk on the dry land. He's the one who can send crows to feed. Of millions of Israelites, he's the one who lead us with pillar of cloud and fire every day. And he can also do miracles, give us manna, help us protect us, so our shoes they don't pro they don't even wear out in the forty years in the wilderness. This God, He cares for us and He loves us. Brothers and sisters, let's pray out loud for how God has led us, provided for us, protected us. We give thanks to Him, to our Abba Father in heaven. In you, there's nothing impossible. You are the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present God. We fix our eyes on you. Lord, we thank you and praise you. You're the great and awesome God, and you are willing to dwell among us. Lord, we praise you. We give you thanks because you are the one. The great God who hears our prayers and cares for us, we give you praise. You're the mighty God in our lives. We praise you. We worship you. Remember, in the beginning of the Acrop 611, like this chapter, the co workers came to have a look and spy the land nearby. In 611, we have this cultural tradition. We really like to live closer to the tabernacle. So we went around the church and we thought, this is a nice place, close to the church. So we can save some transportation. This is the best school area, and we have these host, wholesale marketplace. But in the end, we just say, nevertheless, the rent is too expensive. Our faith is little. We always forget God's grace. Remember, Simo told us, yes, our rent is, is the rent is expensive. But it would be enough. We find a place, an apartment. God can provide an apartment for every co worker in Hong Kong Island. So today, let's repent deeper. 
What are the giants in our lives today? Our finance, our job, our relationships, our children. Do we tell the Lord? What do we say to God? Nevertheless, or but? In our hearts, even though these are like the giants, in our eyes, we are like grasshoppers. But it's God not greater than the giants? Is God not greater than the challenges we face? Today I hear God speaks to us again this morning. Trust to me. Believe in me. Give to the Lord what you think is great and difficult. I am your Lord. I am your God. I am the one who can open up streams in the desert to open the path, the way in the desert. Our God is telling us again, put your faith in me. I am your rock, the unshakable rock. What are the giants in your heart now? Pray to the Lord. Confess to the Lord our little faith and trust everything to Him. Confess to God that we are short sighted. Confess to God we always forgot, always forget God's grace. Confess to the Lord we don't really know Him. You know, all our difficulties, we lift all our burdens to God. Dear Lord Jesus, we come before you. We ask you again, forgive all our little faith. Forgive the sin of our little faith. We cannot see you. We cannot see your greatness. But we give you all the difficulties we face now all the doubts of the giants. We say, Lord, we come before you. We believe in you. You are greater than the giants. You are greater than the difficulties. We believe there's a way out in you. In Jesus' name, I ask that you bless all our brothers and sisters. Before you, we need a greater faith to go forward. In Jesus' name, I ask that you have us see the promised land. Lord, we know that you love us. As we move forward in faith, you give us all the abundance and blessing. In Jesus' name, I ask that you give us this faith. Help us so that we can break through our limitations and perspective, so that we can fix our eyes and you to trust that you will lead us forward. You will lead us in, to walk in your promises. Lord, I thank you and praise you. Thank you for your prayers. And 
Let's pray for new crop 611. November 1st will be our anniversary, and、uh, we hope that it's not just having a new venue after the anniversary. But we pray that the new revival anointing will come. That this place will not be enough to host everyone on the Sunday service. So we pray for a new crop 611. We believe that God is speaking to us every day, so that we can have faith. We can go forward every day. So we call you. You are not co-workers, but you are part of this. That we can receive and take the promised land. That you be part of this. So let's pray. Lift up our hands to pray in tongues and ask God to help us. So we can take more land for the Lord. We can take more souls for the Lord. Let's pray. Ask God to use us, six one one, New Crop six one one, to walk in His will, to reveal His blueprints for us, to reveal His promises to us. We want to enter into God's plan. Jesus, we thank you and praise you again. And again, you speak to us in the morning devotion. We said the topic and echo is set up, ready to go forward. Lord, may you bless us. Give us the new venue for the Sunday service. May you give it to us according your will. Bless every brother and sister, so our hearts and our spirit. Will be ready to take the land for God, to take the soul for God. Lord, may you help us so that we can be full of faith. We can experience working with you together. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Lord. May God help each one of us open our spiritual eyes, so that we see the perspective of Caleb and Joshua, the spiritual perspective, so that every one of us, when we see what God has given us, what God has prepared for us, we can proclaim. By faith in our hearts, that place, that land is truly a land flowing with milk and honey. That land truly, really, is the land of milk and honey. In Jesus' name, I bless our new crop 611. Now the brothers and sisters watching our morning devotion, may the Holy Spirit fill you, open your spiritual eyes, open the eyes of faith, so. You can see the really, truly that God has given you. That everything God has set before you truly is the land flowing with milk and honey. May this faith enter you. May the Lord help and strengthen your faith so that you can continue to move forward and to reach the promised land that you have given us. Until we can move forward. In, in, into the vision you have given us, Lord bless us as we walk this path of faith. Lord bless us to be head and not a tail, to be the top and not the bottom. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our morning devotion will end here. May the Lord bless you.